It started off as a, as a, a single story um, thatched uh, cottage here, farmhouse. It's been uh, yeah, a long time associated with the, uh, with the Scartine hounds and um, I think we're, we moved in here about 17, uh, 1740 and uh, built up from that house. They built the front end up and then the back end of the house. I wish they'd stopped. It's a big old rambling house. Lovely, lovely um, rural part of uh, Southern Ireland here in under the uh, um, shadow of the uh, Galtee Mountains. It's a beautiful place to be. We're very, very lucky indeed. It's a kind of hub of the country, if you like, and uh, in the, in the, uh, from a hunting point of view. And uh, we're here a while. And uh, we've a long association with the hounds of the Kerry Beagle. And uh, Kerry Beagle, one of uh, only nine um, native Irish breeds. And he's been a tremendous uh, companion of the Ryans all the way through the generations. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm the ninth, actually, the ninth generation. And uh, to carry the horn, amazingly. And uh, all our time comes, our tenure comes, all right, and goes. And uh, I hunted them for 27, 28 seasons. And, uh, and then I had to um, um, pass on the horn to uh, good, uh, hearty young fellas coming on. And some great young fellas have come in since me. And uh, I'm, I last carried the horn, I think, about, ooh, about eight years ago. So it's, um, it, it, my body gave up a little bit on me, and, uh, but I'm still very much involved. And uh, I think my young fellow would be as well. And back to their roots in France, they all came, all hounds came out of France, as did these uh, Kerry Beagles originally. And uh, science told us that these lads um, carry the closest resemblance to the earliest chronicled hunting hound, and they came out of France. And the roots of these would be the Grand Bleu de Gascon Grand Jura and the Saint Hubert in, in France. But that's a long, long time ago. You're talking about um, 12th, 13th, 14th century. And I think it, uh, they say in about the 17th, 18th century are the first uh, records of them um, coming here. We have written records going back to 1640, and there were hounds there in those, in those early records. Through the ages, uh, they came through, um, um, predominantly based down in the south coast, along the south coast of Ireland, from uh, Dingle through to uh, Kinmare, and uh, hence the Kerry, bit of the Kerry Beagle, I suppose. Daniel O'Connell, the great liberator down in Derry Nan, he had a pack of them at one stage, and uh, we have lovely uh, letters from uh, Daniel O'Connell. So there's a lot of history there to the, uh, to the Kerry Beagle, and um, he's uh, the most gorgeous, gorgeous hound to deal with. Um, very different from the, uh, from the English Foxhound. Um, he has his own physiology, his own psychology in a way as well. They think a little bit different and uh, very independent, a bit like Daniel O'Connell himself, and very strong in their feet. And uh, they love the game, they love their hunting. And it's been a, a pleasure um, being their companion. I, we say that uh, they're our companion. Well, well, we're very much theirs as well. Yeah, she's lost a bit since I've seen her last. Yeah. We're walking out of a day, there, um, some hounds will be up in the front of the pack, some in the middle, some at the back. And when I'm looking for a name, even though they're all coloured exactly the same, you'd have a fair idea what hounds are going to likely be up in the front end, the middle end, and the back end. And when they're actually hunting, it'd be a very, very different order. Some of the hounds at the back on exercise will be the ones up in front when they're actually hunting. And when a car comes along the road, you can get them over to one side very easily. And, uh, and that, that, that's true training as well, which they've got to do. The, the hunting part of what they do is very, very much genetic. It's, it's what they do, it's very much inherited. But they do need to learn a little bit of, 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 of discipline, if you like, um, um, so that they're safe on the road, et cetera. And that they come back to you when you, when you call them back and whatever. And in this, it's been interesting. We haven't hunted for the last two years with COVID, etc. cetera. And uh, um, we're back hunting there this year. So we haven't been in the area for two years. And the reception that we're getting coming back in again, absolutely tremendous. So to all our farmers, thanks a million, because we wouldn't be doing it only for you. Our, our real, real gratitude is, is to the, the farmers in the whole area. And uh, the Scartian country is about 30 miles by 30 miles uh, and, uh, in, in, in width and breadth. And uh, we have on database probably, what, about 850 farmers whose land we cross. And that's a lot. And um, in preparation for a day, the average uh, amount of calls that we make are 32, 32 farms that we'll call into. But there is a long, long tradition of it as well. And uh, it's been a good tradition, which has been fantastic.
the Scotians are coming through and they call beforehand, they call afterwards, and they call on the day, we see the packet, there's a great buzz in the area and it really livens everybody up and, and uh, it's, isn't it fantastic um, to get that reception. Mm -hmm.